Hi everyone, welcome to Aryan Tutorials on Engineering Mechanics. So here uh, the lecture 4 which is on resultant of coplanar concurrent forces. It means how to find out the resultant force of number of coplanar concurrent forces acting on your body. So first here we have to we go through the statement the coplanar concurrent force system means number of forces acting on body at same point. Okay. And next, the resultant of these forces can be determined by two methods. That means here two methods are there for finding the resultant of coplanar concurrent forces. That is one analytical method and second one is graphical method. So here first we discussed about the analytical method. So in that method, how we can find out the resultant of coplanar concurrent force system acting on your body. So in analytical method, consider the following figure. So here in this method first we can uh, resolve one force component into two component that is in x direction and y direction that means horizontal component and vertical component. So in two directions we can resolve one force. So let us consider the figure here it is a figure uh, the number of four number of forces acting at the same point that is considered as O and they are acting at a different angles with uh, horizontal line and vertical line so in this condition what is the resultant force of these four forces uh, we can find out by using analytical method okay so first uh, we consider the two horizontal two horizontal and vertical components of f1 so here consider horizontal component of f1 as h1 and uh, consider the vertical component of f1 as v1 that means in x direction and y direction so now i will show you the horizontal and vertical components of the force f1 so here it is the horizontal component and here it is the vertical component and we have assumed them as h1 and v1 okay so now we have to find out the what is h1 what is v1 in terms of f1 so how we can find out means by shifting v1 to right side so how can we shift means here like this we need to shift the v1 to right side so by this uh, we can uh, uh, we can observe that we have formed the right angle triangle so by using this right angle triangle we can find out what is h1 and what is v1 in terms of angle alpha 1 and force f1 so first uh, uh, apply sin theta rule sin alpha 1 is equal to opponent by hypotenuse that is v1 by f1 so v1 by f1 so automatically v1 equal to we can get f1 into sin alpha 1 so here we got vertical component of the force that is v1 is equal to f1 sin alpha 1 and similarly apply cos theta rule cos alpha 1 equal to adjacent by hypotenuse adjacent is h1 and hypotenuse is f1 so adjacent h1 by f1 so automatically h1 is equal we get as f1 cos alpha 1 so like this we have to determine the horizontal component of f1 and uh, vertical component of f1 similarly for all the forces we need to find out what are the horizontal components and what are the vertical components so again for all those forces also we discuss now so next we need to consider the force f2 so for this F2 also we need to find out horizontal component and vertical component. Here we assume the horizontal component for F2 as H2 and the vertical component of F2 as V2. So in this condition, once again I will show you the two components that is H2 and this is V2. So again we need to find out what is H2, what is V2 in terms of F2 and alpha 2. So how can we find out means again we can construct a right angle triangle by shifting the vertical component okay here i am representing the name so i have shifted the vertical component to left side so then we formed a right angle triangle so in this right angle triangle by using this right angle triangle we can find out what is h2 what is v2 so first we apply again sin alpha 2 sin alpha 2 is equal to we can write it as opponent by hypotenuse v2 by f2 so v2 by f2 so automatically v2 is equal to f2 into sin alpha 2 so we got the vertical component of the force f2 
then we have to find out the h2 for finding h2 once again apply cos theta that is cos alpha 2 is equal to adjacent adjacent is h2 and the hypotenuse is f2 so so cos alpha 2 is equal to we got as h2 by f2 that is adjacent by hypotenuse okay so again we can write it as h2 is equal to f2 into cos alpha 2 so again we got the vertical and horizontal component for f2 so similarly we need to get for f3 also here f3 is here so for this f3 also we need to find out horizontal component and vertical component so similarly for f3 uh, we need to consider horizontal and vertical component so for that we need to construct the right angle triangle so before that we need to resolve the force into two components that is in horizontal direction h3 and that is in vertical direction v3 so shift the h3 to bottom then we can construct the right angle triangle so like this by using this right angle triangle again we can find out the what is h3 and what is v3 so again apply sin alpha 3 is equal to opponent h3 by hypotenuse f3 so automatically h3 is equal to f3 sin alpha 3 and similarly cos alpha 3 is equal to adjacent v3 by hypotenuse f3 v3 by f3 so automatically we get v3 is equal to f3 cos alpha 3 so we got f3 also so similarly we need to find out for f4 so here f4 is there here so for this f4 also we need to find out horizontal and vertical component so similarly for f4 so again resolve it into two components in horizontal direction and vertical direction okay h4 and v4 so again shift the h4 to bottom then construct the right angle triangle then again find out what is h4 and what is v4 so for that apply sin alpha 4 is equal to opponent that is v4 by hypotenuse f4 v4 by f4 so automatically v4 is equal to we can write it as f4 into sin alpha 4 so here here alpha 4 is missing please mention it as 4 alpha 4 and similarly cos alpha 4 is equal to adjacent by f4 adjacent this one h4 by hypotenuse f4 so h4 by f4 so automatically h4 is equal to we can get f4 into cos alpha 4 so here we have determined all the horizontal components and vertical components for all forces so after finding all the horizontal and vertical forces for all the forces uh, we need to find out the resultant force so how can we find out the resultant force means here first we need to find out the sum of all horizontal components and then we need to find out sum of all vertical components so sigma h represents the sum of all horizontal components so here we need to add all the horizontal components those are h1 h2 plus h3 plus h4 okay next we need to find out sum of all vertical components so that is represented by sigma v sigma v is equal to v1 plus v2 plus v3 plus v4 so after finding the sum of all horizontal components and vertical components of the forces then we need to apply the resultant formula that is given as r is equal to square root of sigma h square plus sigma v square so by substituting these sigma h and sigma v values in this formula we can get the resultant of all these forces that means representing all these forces with single force component okay so again we can also find out the theta value so that means at which angle with horizontal line the resultant force is acting so that angle can be determined by applying the tan theta uh, tan theta is equal to sigma h by sigma v no 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 not sigma h sigma v by sigma h tan theta is equal to sigma v by sigma h by that we can find out the theta so theta is equal to tan inverse of sigma v by sigma h like that also we can find out the theta of the resultant force angle of the angle of inclination of the resultant force so like this we need to find out the resultant of all the forces that means representing the only single force that is the result of all these forces okay this is the analytical method for finding the resultant of all the forces so i hope you understand 
and again if you really like my explanation please share subscribe to my channel and try to share my video lectures with your friends and uh, and please subscribe to my channel and thanks for watching my video thank you so much thank you all